In this video, we're going to look into speculative decoding, a faster way to make LLM inferencing. We're going to look into what it is, why is it actually useful, or is it actually useful? We're going to look into speculative decoding, the theory behind it. We are going to be using or diving inside of some literature that's been posted by Microsoft Research and Alibaba Group. And we're going to do a demonstration of speculative decoding with VLLMs because VLLMs actually now supports speculative decoding. And we're going to use that with Llama 3.2 and 3.1 models to see how we can use it in the most effective way possible. By the way, I make similar videos like these on LLMs, machine learning, and other data science tools. So please feel free to subscribe. Now, before we start going into the details of how to implement it, let's talk about what is the problem with the current autoregressive decoding. So if you guys were not aware, the current models are three years, and these are the models that we are using, they're open source, tend to have something called autoregressive decoding. That's how they generate the output tokens that you're currently observing. So in technical terms, Autoregressive decoding generates each word a token one at a time. So imagine you're trying to write a sentence. You can only write one word at a time. So imagine this small block over here is one word. So every time a new block is being generated, it has to attend to the previous blocks of text through all the different parameters, all the different operations, and then generate the next token. This happens again for the next token and the next token. And this is what this for loop is essentially, or sorry, while loop is essentially showing you in this pseudocode. Now, as you can imagine, this becomes very, very slow and we need to make it faster. And this is where speculative decoding comes in. So in simple words, it's two models working together, trying to make inference faster. Now, this is how the speculative decoding looks like in this picture over here, compared to autoregressive decoding. You have two different models. So one is the normal model that you're going to use, the larger model. And you have a smaller model called the draft model, which is going to suggest various texts while it is inferencing. And it's going to verify whether or not that text is appropriate for that sentences. Now, with autoregressive decoding, this can become very, very slow because it generates one word at a time. And when you have to generate longer sentences, that can be quite a long, long process. The spec of decoding kind of increases that, that speed of generating each token at a time with the help of an assistant, if you may. So in technical terms, spec of decoding lets the model speculate a few steps ahead, reducing the number of times it needs to stop and calculate. This allows it to generate text faster by skipping some of the slower step-by-step -step process that autoregressive decoding requires. Now, speculative decoding is kind of broken down into two different sections. When you have the verification model and the draft model. Now, from the verification model, you have different strategies of verification. And from the drafting, you have different drafting strategies. Today, we will be implementing the independent drafting strategy, or at least we'll be focusing on it much, much more because that is what is available through VLM. Now, according to this literature over here, speculative decoding is nothing, nothing new. It's been around since just after the original transformer architecture was introduced in 2013. But now the following years, like 2022, 2023, things started to get much, much more popular because of the necessity for increased inference speed in the market. Now, I will also provide a link to this specific article in the description down below. So you guys can dive deep inside what spec of decoding is, what are the different types of spec of decoding and whatnot. Now, let's go ahead and actually look into how to implement it using VLM to increase your production workflow. So this experiment is going to be broken down into five different sections. First, we're going to install the packages, which I've done over here. We are using a Colab instance with an A100 GPU. But if you can get this instance with a Colab Pro Plus, subscription. So this is the cheapest way you guys can train and fine tune any large large models. So you guys should definitely use it. And aside from that, this experiment will be focused on checking the time, the GPU draw, and also the power draw in watts, check out the performance using spec of decoding and whether or not it actually increases the inference speed or not. Now, after you guys have installed the package, we are going to be defining the VLLM package. We're going to import the time. We can define these prompts, which we are going to use as a constant to test our models and that we're going to find some sampling params these are going to set the temperature the top p and the max token which will be constant throughout the entire experiment so first things first let's actually check how to do autoregressive decoding performance autoregressive is just a fancy way or essentially it means the normal inference that we typically do with LLMs. you're going to need an hf token that should be available on the environment now the model has been loaded we are loading it through the vllm package here we pass in the meta llama 3.18 million as our starting base model. We pass in some extra parameters, max model length and use v2 block manager equals to true. And now we can actually start making inferences. And to simply start making inferences using VLM is actually very, very simple. All you have to do is write outputs equals to LLM generate. You pass in the prompt 
which we defined over here, and we're going to pass in the sampling patterns, which we defined over here. Now, how do we measure the time? To do that, we're going to define a variable called generation time, which means the starting position or the starting time before we start generating, and then the duration, which can be calculated after the generation, like this. So we take the current time minus the generation time, which we start with. And then we can have a for loop where we're going to count the total number of tokens generated, and then we can print it out over here. We calculate how many tokens was generated per second. So as from that, so we have around input speed of 5.44 tokens per second and output token of 382 tokens per second. In total, both the input and output, we've got around 387 tokens per second. And the main idea is once we start using speculative decoding, this should get much, much faster. Now, how do we know how much GPU did actually draw when doing inferencing? So to do that, I've went ahead and created a function that calculates exactly that. So we can import set process and time. We can define a function called get GPU usage. And here we are going to use the NVIDIA SMI. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with it, what it is. So into NVIDIA SMI, you can actually get information about the GPU and how much GPU power is taking, how much power is it drawing currently and so forth. And if you guys can actually record that during the inference time, that could be an interesting observation. So I went ahead and made this function that takes all the information and then saves it and gives me an output. And I'm gonna show you guys very, very soon how it looks like. So we can have the exact same code we had over here. And there we go, we have the exact same code that I previously mentioned. We calculate the total tokens at the end after generation. But then before that, we do one more extra step and we start the GPU usage style. And we also calculate the GPU end usage. And after that, we're gonna get a nice output, or print out the output of the GPU, Usage start, GPU says end, and also the power draw. And there you guys have it. So before we started inferencing, the power draw was around 50 watts. But then after the inference, the power draw was 231 watts. The total memory used was around 36 gigabytes of video RAM. And this one was also 36 gigabytes, so no differences over there. And GPU utilization was around 85% while it was inferencing. So that's a very interesting observations. Now what is interesting is, over here the speed was around 387 tokens per second. And over here it's a total speed of 432 tokens per second, which is a very interesting observations. Now, what happens when you actually start using a draft model? So we're going to use the same model as Llama 3.18 billion, but then we're also going to use a Llama 3.21 billion as an extra model. So let's see how that turns out. But before that, we have to clear the memory because we're going to reload the model again with a Llama 3.21. So let's clear that. And within a few seconds, the whole GPU should be free for us to use for our next model. So we can define the LLM over here. We can pass in the model name, the tensor parallel one, and then we can do the special command, speculative decoding, where we pass in the middle Llama 3.2, 1 billion, the small language model. And then we can define the number of speculative tokens, which is going to be five. And then we're going to do max sequence select, same as before. And this parameter for block manager equals a true, same as before as well. So everything's constant except for these two extra parameters. So let's load the model. All right, now the model has been loaded. Now we're going to do the exact same scene. So the exact same code up here, but paste it over here again for getting all the six things. So GPU start, generation time start, we get the output. And after that output, we're going to get the duration, the total tokens that was generated, and then the GPU usage at the end. Again, I want to remind you guys, we are using speculative token five, which means five tokens will be speculated by the assisting language model, Llama 3.21 billion. So beginning of the inference, we are seeing a power draw of 50 watts and then a power draw of 188 watts, which is comparable to the previous one. This one actually took more power by using only one model, and this one took slightly less power for generating it, which is a very, very interesting observations. In this case, the GPU utilization was only 81% compared to the 85% in our previous step. And we are, of course, using slightly more memory now because we are holding or we are loading two different language models in the same GPU, but that is to be expected. But still, the power draw is quite less than the previous one. And then the main question, did it actually increase the infra speed? And the answer is yes. It was around 289 tokens per second, which is surprisingly slower. Actually, sorry, my bad. I said wrong. The speed was actually worse than before. We actually generated 289 tokens per second, whereas in this case, we've generated 432 tokens per second, which is a very interesting observations. Okay, now let's, let's actually try to speculate using only 
one token sorry and let's try to actually speculate two tokens instead so same as before we're gonna clear the memory and we can load the model again okay so here we loaded the model again now we're speculative decoding tokens too which means two tokens are going to be assistively speculated for the larger model now let's do the exact same thing same standard procedure trying to see the matrix okay and now there we go we took less power draw than the previous one where we speculated around five tokens so let's power draw same memory used actually sorry the gpu utilization was actually 75 percent which is very interesting but then we generated around 400 tokens per second in total it took around 404 tokens per second which is technically more tokens generated per second than the previous one where we speculated around five tokens however what is actually really interesting is comparing it to the baseline model so the baseline model, so the baseline model generated around 427 tokens per second without speculative decoding as output and with two speculative tokens we generate around 400 tokens per second however the power draw was significantly less than the baseline model and the speculative token 5 configuration okay so i went ahead and did one more extra step where i tested with one speculative token instead of two or five in order to see how it performs and it actually seems like it actually performs much much better now so now it actually generates around 443 tokens as output in total 448 tokens per second both input and output and let's compare this 443 compared to the baseline model so this is the baseline model the output is 427 tokens per second whereas the output token with spectrum decoding token 1 is 443 which is a 20 token per second increase again very very interesting and the power drop is quite large from 50 watts to 209 watts compared to the baseline model where we have 231 watts power draw in total again less power draw and more outputted tokens which is a really really good sign now did it say that the vllm is not currently that optimized for speculative decoding i'm assuming while while they're actually trying to figure out how to really implement speculative decoding in vllm and really optimize it for more speculative tokens we are going to see some even more higher performances in the future all right guys hope you found this video insightful if you guys did please free subscribe i make similar videos like these all right guys i'll see you in my next video have a nice time all right guys it's a quick experiment with using speculative decoding a quick overview of how to use it using vllm and also seeing some realistic expectation from this technique i hope you found this video insightful if you guys did please please subscribe i make similar videos like these all right guys hope to see you in my next video have a nice day